it. Susie popping in to say hi. Just parked the car, um, headed to work. So it is freezing here in New York City. It's 36 degrees Fahrenheit. I have my turtleneck, my winter coat, my thermals. It is cold. So stay warm wherever you are and enjoy the video. Hi everyone, it's Susie. Welcome back. And if you're new, welcome to Dragonfly Bee's resale journey. I am determined to complete this unboxing of that 16 pound Shop Goodwill jewelry lot. I could not do it in four parts. So here is the finale. Here is part five. Um, it basically was due to all the small pieces. So let's jump right in and start off with these necklaces. This box had a few of these styled necklaces where there were multi strands. This one here is silver tone. There's multiple strands. There is even some beads as well as dangles that need a good wipe down. Um, a beaded strand and different chain links. This here is a double stranded necklace that falls down to those multiple strands beneath. It's finished off with the lobster claw and there is a very long extender at the end. So looking at this, um, oh, let me show you the back side. There's the back side. There is no maker's mark on this. But I have to say, it is substantial. And the drop on this is about 9 inches. So we have this really nice silver tone multi-strand necklace. Next up is a gold tone necklace that has two layers. And it's um, tricolor. Is it, or is it two-tone? Let me take another look at this. All right, it looks to be gold tone and silver tone. So I take that back. It's finished off with a lobster claw and an extender, and has all these dangling pieces on two chains, and they have a, um, hammered effect to them. It's identical on the opposite side. There is no jewelry tag, but let's measure the drop on this one. This one's a little bit longer than the other one. This is nine and a half inches in drop. So we have this really fun one. Next up. Hmm. Okay. This is a triple wire it's um it's covered in gold in matte gold tone uh there is a extender with the clear bead at the, at the end a lobster claw but i like these look how pretty these green stations are. They kind of have like a iridescence to them. Um, I guess this needs to be shaped. There is the back side. They are transparent. You can see right through them. Some are faceted. So let's, uh, let's measure the drop on this one. Um, there is that extender too. So I would say this is about seven and a half inches. So we have this. Um, it needs to be untangled. We have this. What, what's this one? You know what? This is a bracelet. Here's a toggle bracelet. And this is, I would say tricolor. You have these textured Hoops in gold tone, silver tone, and gunmetal. And there are five strands. 
and there's the toggle. All right. This one measures approximately. Uh, it can be seven and a half inches or it could be eight inches because there are two loops on the opposite end. So we have, we have this toggle bracelet. Next up, oh, this is very pretty. This is a gold tone necklace and it has these uh, beaded stations along the necklace and hanging off of it is this pendant. The pendant has some smoky bezeled rhinestones and then there is a amber tone rhinestone teardrop hanging in the middle of that frame. This is really adorable. Uh, there is the back side. It's kind of like a brassy tone. And um, there is an extender too. So let's measure. I like this one. Let's measure the length of the drop on this one. And it's about seven and a half inches. So we have this one here. Next one. Okay, this is a very delicate yellow gold tone chain. It has a lobster clasp, and there's some verdigris on there. That can be cleaned off easily, but it's basically a cage. Huh. I wonder if it opens. Can you put something in there? I am not quite sure. I don't think so. I don't think so. So, okay, something like this. Um, I'll, I'll place into the craft lot. Next up is this silver tone necklace it has a spring ring hanging off of it you know these feel like um well these polished moon glow type of beads feel cold these don't these may be lucite perhaps and the brown ones too it looks pretty crudely made because if you look at the seed beads here, look at how it's um, finished off. You can see the thread. So this may, may be an artisan piece, but you know what? I do like the colors and um, it's quite unique. There's some gold or may I say brass tone beads in between and the drop on this necklace is about seven and a half inches long so we have that and then next up is this beauty look at this one wow this uh, almost reminds me of a, a j crew style because it does have that antique brass tone chain which is very common with j crew jewelry but i don't see any jewelry mark or tag on this necklace. Uh, there is a lobster claw, there's that extender. But let's take a look at this. Wow. They're really beautiful, clear, prong set, faceted rhinestones on the top layer. And on the bottom half are these dangles of two faux pearls with the rhinestone um, rondelles between them. Really nice. Uh, these pearls are not extremely pure white. They do look a little um, off-white to me, or ivory maybe. Uh, there is the back side, so those rhinestones are closed in the back it's really a pretty necklace and i believe all the rhinestones are there on the rondelles the pearls have a nice luster um i don't believe they are real uh let me just take a quick yeah they are faux pearls but nonetheless this is really a beautiful statement necklace so let's um let's measure the drop on this one. 
And this one has a drop of about eight and a half inches. So we have we have that. Um, next up is a silver tone necklace. It's like a, almost like a diamond cut type of chain. There is a lobster claw, a really long extender. And hanging off of it is this, um, it looks like a ribbon with a clear rhinestone center. There's the back. Okay, this is very sweet. It's very delicate. And let's measure the drop on this necklace. This one has a drop of about seven and a half inches. And then lastly, in this group, we have this one. This here is a pendant. It has these really beautiful, vivid blue. They're acrylic. Uh, beads along with this teal square colored one. It's filled with clear rhinestones as well as blue ones. You see? And looking at this closely, all the rhinestones are there. There's the back side. And, um,. This chain is silver tone. It's a very long one, too. It's finished off like so. I wonder if um, this was like a marriage. Because this is gold tone. But mm, the silver tone chain works. So it is so long. Let me measure this chain. I mean, you can easily swap it out, um, but the drop on this very long chain is 17 inches. So, um, yeah, we have, we have this one. All right, more to come. Moving on. Speaking about craft lots, I have a subscriber who sent me these before and after shots. She purchased a craft item and that is on the upper half of the screen. It's a ring that was missing the middle um, center stone. She completed it by adding freshwater pearls, some semi-precious stone chips, and created this brand new one-of-a-kind ring. Isn't it beautiful? I think it's so creative. Thank you so much for sending that to me. And anyone who does repurpose um, jewelry and has purchased a craft item from me, send me your pictures too, and I'll feature them here. So, all right. Thanks again. Back to the jewelry. Okay, continuing on. Um, I found four of the same necklaces. Well, let's see. It's all on a faux leather cord. They each have a, a stone on the bottom shaped in a star. I believe this may be a black brown obsidian. I do see some of them have some brown banding going through them. Uh, there are some natural inclusions in them as well. Um, so this one has a lobster claw. This one, this one has an extender. This one also has an extender. Oh, and it also has a price tag. Oh, it just says black stone uh, and some number. Okay, so we have that. And also this one. So, they all seem to be the same size and drop. It's funny, I think I did find an extender in the box. Um, the drop on this is about eight and a quarter inches. I mean, I could measure all of them uh, quickly. Just to see, yeah, they're all the same size. So we have four of these. Um, star pendants necklaces next up let's see what else we have here i think we have some craft items 
I don't know what that symbol is, but it's quite a heavy piece of silver. It's on this, um, it looks like a shoelace. Uh, let me see if it is magnetic. And it is not. So, um, yeah, it's, it's hammered. And, um, yeah, it's a very hefty, uh, ring. So, does anyone know what that, um, symbol means? It could be maybe something in Hebrew. I, I don't know. But I'll test this later on. Uh, next up. Oh, this is pretty um, tarnished. Well, I would say worn at the end. You see the back of that jewelry tag? This is, um, I believe this is American Eagle. Um, and let's see what it is. This is a silver tone mesh link necklace it's pretty long. Look how long okay let's look at the chain yeah there's just some discoloration on the top portion and um these mesh links actually look uh look good well, i guess you can um repurpose this by removing the chain from these jump rings and attaching them to something else i mean yeah this can definitely be repurposed so you know what i will just place this in a craft lot i think i see something else that's going into a craft lot and that's this one i mean it's very clean it's like a like a taffeta ribbon attached to some silver uh, hoops it has the lobster claw, and then the fabric is um, wrapped around every other, well, no, it's, well, yeah. It's wrapped around every pearl. These feel heavy. Um, so they, you know what? I believe they're glass. Um, let's see. Oh, I would say about about nine inches and drop and um yeah i'll put it in the craft lot that way someone can repurpose these why not I see something else going into a craft lot right here this little cylinder of rhinestones there is copper on either side i mean it's kind of uniform you think it's supposed to be copper it's on a chain that looks pretty um, discolored. Like the, the lobster claw has some copper coming out of it too. Uh, but you know what? This little cylinder is kind of cute. So yeah, this will be in, in the craft lot as well. Um, let's see what this is. Oh yeah, this is going into a craft lot too. What's that? We'll look at that later. This is a very long silver tone necklace and hanging off of it is, oh, it looks like a little partridge. Uh, but the partridge does have some copper around the outline. Not much, but you can see it if you look close and it articulates these little wings well feathers move on the bottom very sweet let's look at the back okay there's the back and yeah this will be a craft item too so we have this i think we have a bunch of craft items here let's see what else we have okay here's a stretchy looks to be good it's a silver tone scroll like ring with the faux bead it's kind of cool you you rarely see this color so we have that 
Um, let's see. Huh. All right. Let's go over everything. I think that's it for the craft. Um, more rings. I'm telling you, this, this box really had a lot. Okay, so we went over this one. Um, this one here is going to craft as well. I mean, it's... It's... It's pretty worn. Um, let me get the sizer. Yeah, this one is about a seven and see how scratched up it is. But you know, it's a pretty cool design. This will be a craft item. So we have this one. Uh, next one. Oh, this is really nice. Uh, this is a, like a cigar band ring. There's orange enamel, navy blue enamel, and then you have that gold glitter in the center. Um, the size on this one is probably about an eight. So we have this ring, and it's a copper tone. I like that one. This one's a, okay, this is a hematite ring. And uh, it's just a polished hematite ring. And this is about a six and six and three quarters. So we have that. Oh, this is pretty. Um, this is a gold tone ring with a floral design. And the size on this one is, a, is um, it's about a six. So we have that. This is a snake ring. I don't see any. Oh, I do see something written in there. This is a lucky brand. It says lucky brand. Um, and this one is about, I would say about a six as well, or five and three quarters. Green rhinestones and green rhinestone eyes and a ivory enamel uh, head. It's pretty cool. This one is a brass tone. There's some wear on the back side. Let's see if it says anything. 1937. That's what it says inside. And this one is about a Six and um, three quarters. So it's a knot. I like this one. So we have that. Uh, this one, gold tone, rhinestones, and a heart design. This one's about an eight. There's some scratches on the back of the band. Rhinestones and a heart design. This one's about an eight. There's some scratches on the back of the band, but the rhinestones are all there. It's kind of nice. Okay, this one here, this silver tone, and this is also Lucky Brand. It says Lucky Brand right in, inside. And it looks to be like a um, leather cord knot. Interesting. The size on this one seems to be a five and a half. There is wear on this ring, but it, you know, it kind of has that industrial look. Uh, yeah, and it's marked Lucky Brand right inside. Does Lucky Brand make them um, sterling silver? I doubt it. It's not magnetic. Okay, moving on. Wow, this is tarnished. This is um, just a simple silver tone band with pink 
rhinestones all around. <clears throat> okay, this one is a size six and three quarters. Clean that up, that would look really nice. And then we have this brass ring, uh, and there's green enamel and peace signs. And this one here is about a six. Very cool. Okay, this one is another um, cigar type band ring. Uh, this is copper tone with that rose gold glitter. And this is a this is a larger one. It's about an eight and three quarters. So we have that. That's pretty too. And then this one here is marked nine two five T T A Z. Uh, and it it's some sort of um like druzy or raw 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 uh, stone. This one measures about a, um, a size seven. We have that. We will test the ones that are marked. This one here. Oh, this is nice. It's like a a swirl. This is marked nine two five also, and this is like a size eight and three quarters. Very nice. So this will be tested. This will be tested. What's this? Wow. Looks like a mood ring. Like when you look at it at different angles. When you look at it this way, it looks clear. When you look at it up front, it looks bluish. What is this? Um, it's on a gold tone band. It says something. Um, here, look at that for a second. Seta, S-E-T-A. Okay. Seta. Seta. This ring's a seven. Do you know what a seta is? What, you know, it sounds familiar, but I don't recall. I don't know. This looks like there's a lot of glue on that, on the side. You see that? Oh, well, put that over here. Okay, this is a silver tone ring, high setting, rhinestones, and a black faceted prong set. Uh, bead in the center. This looks really large. Yeah, it's about like a ten and a quarter. So pretty though. There's even rhinestones on either side of it. Very high setting. Um, no marks that I see. No, no marks. So let's grab the magnet. Okay. This is not magnetic either. And then lastly is this. Okay, this is a very tarnished, um, probably silver plated uh, ring made out of a old uh, spoon, maybe. And it says um, reflections. And on the other side. 1947 Rogers, Rogers Brothers. Okay. So this is, um, yeah, that, that's an old vintage, um, company that makes, uh, dinnerware. Uh, this is a six and a quarter. It needs a really good polish. So we have that. And did I go through everything? Yeah, I think those are all the rings, I believe. Okay, so there's more things on this table. Oh, shoot, there's another ring. 
This is a interesting ring with the rhinestone and it's marked uh, Avon. Yeah, it says Avon. It has that, um, it has that inner ring. So I guess this is maybe, I don't know, do, does someone put that there to size it? Yeah, it can go to a size five. This is in pretty nice condition. Gold toe, really pretty. Okay, so moving on, we have this necklace. Wow, look at this um, acrylic beads um, with this animal print. And then you have these faceted black acrylic beads going up the neckline. There is a lobster claw. And oh, there is a jewelry tag with some verdigris on it. I believe that's... um. You and I, so we have this uh, fun. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's how it goes. Uh, looks to be pretty um, short in length, like a choker necklace, seven inches. And then you do have a uh, extender that's about two and a half inches long. So we have this necklace and it's um the same beads that you have on top or the spacers on the bottom this one here very pretty sparkly seed bead necklace and um there is a silver tone lobster claw and a very uh long extender and there's also a jewelry tag on this one. And that says uh, Bonnie J. Bonnie J is, um, is a vintage brand. This is really tiny. But you do have that very long extender. Um, the, yeah, this is, oh, wow. It's only five and a half. Is this for a child? But yeah, this extender is very long. Um, it is... A little over three inches so you have this it looks to be like a like a midnight blue in color so we have that and then lastly in this group is this one this one's really nice um, there's these metal beads and all these metal findings you see that look how ornate and then you have these really beautiful uh, glass pieces in that striped and floral design along with these look how nice this is um in good condition i have to say and there is a a hook like a a hook closure on top this one has a drop of eight and a half inches so yeah, I could just picture this on. Just I like I like um I like the look of this. So we have that. Okay. Moving on. Okay, let's test those rings and um uh, oh, I forgot to show you this stretch ring. Um this is in good condition and it's just a black faceted acrylic bead with some rhinestones all around it. And this one here is marked 925. I noticed that there's a like a little chip maybe right there. This feels like a um a glass stone and uh, the size on this one is about eight and three quarters. So we have that one. So let's um let's test let's test some rings. They are all marked. That doesn't look good. Um they are, they are marked 925. Except, no, this is not. Oh, okay. But I'll scratch it anyway. Yeah, this definitely not. There's copper. This is that Lucky Brand one. Um, 
this is that unusual one. Really unusual. Okay. So let's take a scratch of that. All right. So here are the scratches in this order. And this one, I'm not even going to bother. I mean, can you see that copper? Yeah. So let me get the um, 18 karat acid solution. Oh, I forgot this one. Let me scratch that right in the center. That pendant. Let's drop a drop on each scratch and see what we have. Okay. Really? No. Okay, this one is marked 925 and it is not. It's fake. So, boo to that one. This one here is sterling silver. This one here is also sterling silver. This pendant. Do you see that? The acid ate away that scratch. But the last one. Even though I said it looked coppery, it's bright blue. Oh my. Really? Let's do this one again. Okay. A new scratch. Yeah, it is turning blue. See that? Okay. That was really surprising. And, um, yeah, this is not sterling. All right. Learn something each and every time. Okay. This last piece I wanted to um, share with you is a beautiful vintage double strand necklace in gold tone there's these beautiful gold bicone bead spacers and um, these textured all around and this is all strung together on a gold tone chain this has a seven inch drop there's a beautiful swirl design box clasp it is in, I would say, amazing condition for its age. And um, it opens like so. And you just pop that back in. So wh whoever owned this really uh, took quite good care of it. I don't see any significant wear. Looking at the back side, it looks to be pretty good. Now, do you know what this is? Do you know what vintage brand this is? This is a Pegasus Coral. Now, look at the back of this. It's even pristine. Um, Coral, as you know, I mentioned before many times, it was... um started in 1901, 1902. They incorporated in 1912, and they had many different hallmarks. And this, the Pegasus line came out in 1939. And then they had um, a mark in 1945, which is this Pegasus and this um, Coro in that box. Now there were two types. They would have a rectangle, with the Coro written in there in um, in script, or should I say cursive? I think that's what they call it now. And then they had this one where, you notice the box is um, longer on the left side than it is on the right. 
And these hallmarks were introduced in 1945. And then in 1955, they had Pegasus with the copyright. Um, so this is a pretty special, very special um, vintage Pegasus Coro double strand um, gold tone necklace, which I am really happy to find in this 16 pound mixed jewelry lot from shopgoodwill.com. So this concludes this entire unboxing. I really, really hope you enjoy my videos. And if you do, please give me a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. That way you get in on these discounted subscriber rates. I do offer them here only and then whatever I do not sell on YouTube, I basically list it in my Etsy shop or in Poshmark or um, not so much Macari, but I do have an account there as well. So if you see anything you'd like to purchase, email me at dragonflybees at gmail.com. Um, the instructions are in the beginning of my video after my introduction as well as below in the description box so um thank you for putting for being so patient for putting up with me in these many parts of um this lot uh, it did take quite some time but i appreciate your time with me here and um i will see you soon and everyone have a wonderful wonderful thanksgiving and uh enjoy your family and friends and always be thankful thank you again bye